Good morning, St. James. We're glad you're here. If you are uh, new to the parish, you're here for a uh, special Sunday. This is the state of um, the parish Sunday or our annual meeting Sunday. We had our annual meeting between the services and uh, we elected uh, Gita and Lori and Lucian and Chris as our new vestry members. Uh, we heard about the finances and activities of the church. And I am going to briefly, before the service starts, give just a little summary of, um, of my eyes uh, looking at 2022 and, and looking at this year and our hopes for this year. Uh, so bear with us, but uh, I, I sometimes will just integrate it into the sermon, but I decided I'd preach a sermon and just give you a few minutes about uh, what I've seen in the life of the church. So, uh, uh, so here we go. Get comfortable. <laughs> I do think in order to appreciate the year 2022, we have to go farther back than that. And obviously, you know uh, about the, the basically the majority of 2020 and then 2021. So in 2021, following nine months of remote worship, we had around $125,000 dip in pledges and a decline in plate and rental income. And, and it was a hard season, but one of the things that benefited us is that we could contract. Uh, we, had, uh, we, we had no music director at the time, and we could kind of shut down uh, to be able to live within those means. Uh, but a lot's happened since then. Uh, but that year, Christmas was a hopeful spark. If you remember back a, a Christmas and a half ago, we had over 300 people gathered outside in the back playground. Jen Taylor did a wonderful job of setting it up. Uh, we had hot chocolate on a beautiful, uh, unseasonably warm uh, Christmas Eve. And we had an outdoor uh, pageant replete with live donkeys. And our, our church band, uh, it was really a wonderful celebration and it was so filled with hope. But we were also just getting a new word into our lexicon. Omicron. And we started 22 with our week to week services dropping off precipitously again. And our choir consisted of a few deeply committed stalwarts led by Renee, our interim organist. And yes, it was in person church, but it wasn't what we had left some 20 months earlier. And a year later, today, we we're in a remarkably different place. I think our lessons and carols and our Christmas services were such a vivid example. Our church hadn't looked that spectacular in years. And with Robert, our music director, having a few months under his belt, his robust choir, our church band, the school children, our bells who hadn't rung in over two years, and a complement of guest musicians, it filled our church with such beautiful music. And you all filled our pews. We still have more work to do, but as I thought about how far we have come, I really stopped and was overwhelmed. That was a culminating celebration in a year where we had made significant financial strides, had returned to fuller worship, baptized 19 new members, confirmed and received 23, welcomed countless, countless visitors, sponsored a refugee family, supported another refugee family, continued or renewed previous servant ministries, moved from returning to coffee hour, and then you remember the introduction of breakfast sandwiches or cafe light to the promise of doing cafe once a month, and quickly volunteers stepping up so that we could double that effort to twice a month and that enthusiasm of that first cafe. I'm not sure when and certainly not in my time, we have ever had more adult formation offerings from a men's Bible study to EFM to our, uh, our Sunday morning to Tuesday returning. So many different groups of people coming together to deepen their faith. Fellowship groups gathering as well. Our children's church has returned and we take for granted that it wasn't there for so long and it continues to grow. Our middle and high school youth groups are both going strong and looking to do more in 2023. And when Bishop Goff came and confirmed, she remarked about the number of confirmands. And then twice before she got to this place, she talked about the incredible energy in this place. 
And as she looked out over a sea of people, she described it as the most densely packed church she had visited since the onset of COVID. Ministry leaders had carried their ministries during an incredibly difficult time. And, and as they were ready to take off that load and we were anxious, new ministry leaders emerged. They stepped up. They volunteered, sometimes without being asked. This past fall started with a school and church end of summer social that had over 450 people sign up. We couldn't have even imagined that a year earlier. 270 joined us for a church and school night at Maple Tree Farm surrounded by Christmas lights. We were pushed to capacity and had to turn people away for our fan favorite gingerbread house making. An ECW dinner put on by members of our Afghan family exceeded capacity. Our church school had a great year, their 40th year in terms of enrollment, programming, and overall health. And there's a lot, lot more. But all in all, 2022 was an absolutely jaw-droppingly amazing year. Don't take that for granted. And it does require the context of the years that preceded it. So 2023, we have more work to do and more to be excited about. I hope you've marked your calendar and RSVP'd. We have the return of our Mardi Gras party in just a few weeks. A full liturgical year with our new music director and full choir, and I'm very much looking forward to walking through Holy Week with them. We're looking to take our high schoolers on a mission trip this year, exploring possibilities. And just if you're curious, if you are needed, you are. We have need for volunteers in just about every ministry area. And while we've had an amazing rebound, we still haven't returned to 2020 pledging levels. And with inflationary costs, that loss is magnified by the fact that each dollar only has 88 cents worth of purchase power now. And if you were at the meeting, you heard that we do have a deficit budget. We have, uh, we have ways of meeting that budget, but it is a deficit budget. Now, as we experience so many visitors, we need to rebuild our invite, welcome, and connect ministries to make visitors feel more engaged and integrated into this community to make sure visitors aren't falling between the cracks. And this is important. We need to listen to what God is calling us to do beyond these doors. We have, and for good reason, put a whole lot of attention towards healing and regrouping as a worshiping and faith community but the world needs us. And I pray we continue to experience so many signs of engagement and that that vibrant spirit is never taken for granted as it moves and sweeps through this place. I pray that it may continue, that it may grow, and that it takes us to new and unexpected places. And I'm excited to walk through 2023 with you.